Gracias, Estefano. Well, thank you so very much, Vinted, the organizers of Vinted, for inviting me to share with you uh, my life project. Uh, for over 30 years, I've been working with the most vulnerable schools, the rural, isolated schools where there's no connectivity, no technology. I'm originally a sociologist, and uh, for me, I'm totally convinced that without quality education, we cannot achieve, we cannot reduce inequity in a society, we cannot have social development, cultural development, economic development, and we cannot reach peace and democracy. So this, is, uh, this, is my, this has been my life project. It's been my passion for over 30 years, trying to reduce inequity in Colombia and abroad. Uh, this is like the story of Cinderella, because we started with the poorest, the most vulnerable schools in Colombia, the invisible schools. And, um, I think one of the most interesting things that I wanted to share with you is that necessity is the mother of innovation. When you have so many weaknesses in an educational system and nothing works, you have to rethink everything. So I wanted to share with you this 30-year life project. Uh, it's one of the longest bottom-up innovations of the developing world that's still being sustained because innovations are very vulnerable to political and administrative changes. So I've been holding this baby through all my professional career from public sector, from international organizations, and now from civil society. I have learned you have to work with all of them. So with this in mind, uh, we had to make things very simple and replicable. I think we had like three elements uh, to when we could start designing Escuela Nueva. First, we needed that first we have demonstration schools. People need visual images to change attitudes and behavior, especially when you work with teachers in low-income countries and teachers that work in isolated, difficult regions. So you need demonstration. Second, you need evidence. Uh, as originally a sociologist, we need empirical background and empirical findings to sustain innovations over time. And third, I think the most important, feasibility. Anything that we do in a country has to be technically feasible. It means that any teacher can do it without having a PhD in the middle of the jungle. So technically feasible, politically feasible. You work with unions in Latin America. So we have to learn to work politically speaking. And the most important at all is cost effectiveness. When you don't have too many resources in a country, you need to think of cost effectiveness. So we had to have these three things in mind when we started designing and working with Escuela Nueva. So quality education for peace and democracy, not only for getting good results, but for peace and democracy. And these are like my findings after 30 years, we can confirm, yes, it is possible to improve the quality of education and learning. Yes, we can do it in the most impoverished schools of the world without technology also. We can complement technology afterwards. But more of the same is not enough. We need a paradigm shift in education. You know, I compare the health sector with the education sector. If we bring a doctor from 100 years ago into a hospital today, that doctor is lost. Everything has changed. If we bring a teacher from 100 years ago into a classroom today, that teacher is not so lost because everything has changed except the way of learning. So this is important to keep in mind. It requires a paradigm shift. And nothing of this is new in the theory of education. We know the theory, the, put, the problem and the challenge is putting it in action. And we need to think systemically from the outset. There were so many problems in Colombia and the other countries we've worked in that, that forced us to think systemically. If we wanted to make changes in children, we had to make changes in the way of working with the teachers, in the way of working with the administrators, in the way of working with the parents. And also, learning has to go beyond academics. You know, Fostering social emotional competencies and 21st century skills, peaceful democratic behavior is crucial. Technology triggers change, but we need a new pedagogy 
in place. It's indispensable for effective learning. So Escuela Nueva is like a basic chassis. You can introduce technology afterwards, but when you have small, very uh, small resources, we first have to concentrate on the pedagogy. And this is not new. We're just putting in practice what we know for more than 100 years. So this is why I want to start with this quote. For more than 100 years, the lack of school management methods has been the cause of countless complaints. But it has been only in the last 30 years that efforts have been made to find a solution to this problem. And what has resulted? Schools continue exactly the same as before. Who said it? Comenius in 1600. So this is why I want to focus and emphasize the importance of changing the classrooms. The origin. We started work, I, I want to share the origin where we started. I want to share with you some important empirical research findings and our work. Because we started in government, it became a national policy in Colombia, but then innovations in the public sector are so vulnerable to political changes that we had to create an NGO, Fundación Escuela Nueva, Volvamos a la Gente. So this is precisely because we wanted to maintain the innovation and continue innovating. Governments are not learning organizations as we would like them to be, so we have to learn to work both public-private partnerships and civil society together. The origin. The problems in Latin America, this is all over the world, not only in Latin America, traditional teacher-centered methods, emphasis on memorization, not comprehension, incomplete schoolings. When we started in Colombia, the country, despite the constitution that was uh, mandatory to universalize basic education did not guarantee basic education like the rest of Latin America. Failure, dropout rates, rigid calendars that expel children from the schools, low academic achievements, low self-esteem of children, weak school community relationships. All these problems exist. Overloaded, irrelevant curriculums, insufficient time for learning. It's actually effective time for learning in Latin America is two, three hours daily. Untrained teachers and handling most of the rural multi-grade schools, they don't even know the word. Limited of time in the first grades to learning basic skills. Lack of appropriate materials, no materials. So what is the consequence? Failure. And Latin America, 50% of students in fourth grade in Latin America do not understand what they read. So what democracy are we gonna, we, we're gonna have? We started with the multi-grade schools. These are the invisible schools, the little red house, the little school in the prairie where there's one teacher handling several grades simultaneously. I wanna quote my friend Angela Little from the University of London. She said, you know, all the achievements and the goals of education are found in communities who live at the margin of society. And many of these margins, multi-grade teaching is where one teacher has to handle simultaneously first, second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth grade. Las escuelas unitarias. So she said, you know, multi-grade schools, they operate at the margins, but they force you to innovate. When you have to handle children that not everybody learns the same thing at the same time, different learning rhythms in a classroom, you're forced to go into personalized education. But this is what we started with Escuela Nueva. We started with these isolated remote schools and this forced us to innovate. Nothing worked. So we have a proven solution, Escuela Nueva. But we improving the quality of education implies just more emphasis than just expanding current educational systems. We need a paradigm shift. More of the same is not enough. We need a cultural change, a shift from transmission of information to an emphasis on comprehension and collective construction of knowledge. A new approach to learning and renovated teaching methods and a new role of the teacher for the 21st century. We've been talking about this in Colombia, of a new role of the teacher for 30 years precisely because necessity forces you to innovate. So we started impacting the whole system. We wanted a child that has more self-esteem, improved academic skills, social skills, and democratic behavior. We needed a new role of the teachers. We need an involvement of parents, and especially a new relationship between administrators. 
So we were forced to think systemically from the initial moment. And we had to think, how can we transform complexity into simple, manageable action so that any teacher, without having a PhD in the middle of El Puto Mayo, can have results? We had to rethink the classroom, the learning process, and the whole approach to teacher training. So Escuela Nueva transforms the conventional school and way of learning from frontal to child-centered, active, participatory, cooperative learning. This is not new in the philosophy of education, but it takes place in the elite schools of Latin America, not in the poorest, remote schools. So this is what Escuela Nueva does. This is the way they work. They build knowledge together. It's evolved as a starter local innovation, gradually became a national policy, reaching more than 20,000 schools at the end of the 80s. It started in Colombia. It addresses all these factors simultaneously, systemically, instead of tackling each one in isolation. It integrates curriculum, in-service training, and follow-up, community and administration strategies. We guaranteed basic education with quality. And these are some of the pictures that you can see of children. But these are the poorest of the poor children in the most isolated schools. Child-centered, cooperative learning, different learning paces. Not everybody learns the same thing at the same time. A new role of the teacher as a facilitator, somebody that accompanies, that guides, that doesn't spend so much information transmitting information, but learning how their children learn, being more empathetic and supporting, accompanying the child, not transmitting information. And we said this 30 years ago. A very close relationship between the children and the parents, and we have to learn how to do it, because these parents work very strong, and, the, and we can't bring them to, to so many meetings because the day we bring them to so many meetings, they don't eat. That we had to change and compensate the way of training teachers. Faculties of education in Colombia not even know the word multigrade. They haven't seen the rural isolated schools. And, they say, and in Latin America, we still give conferences on participatory learning. So we had to compensate for what faculties of education were not doing in teachers' colleges with very simple things that teachers were trained with the same methodologies they would be using with their children. Second, that they would have visual images of, where, of, of knowing where to go. And third, not leave the teachers alone. We had to start creating a community of teachers. Teachers learn more from another teacher, more than from supervisors. So John Dewey, 100 years ago, said, Democracy starts in school. So we had to start learning how to nurture democratic and participatory values and active citizenship from classrooms. So children have school governments and their committees, nothing new. We had to change the textbooks. We had to put a more self-directed, reusable, dialoguing learning guides that incorporate content and methodology. Now, this is important for the introduction of technologies. But in schools where you don't have technology, we had to have both printed and virtual resources. But we still are seeing that they don't use the virtual resources. So we had to develop a new type of learning material, personalized, flexible, that combines both independent and cooperative work. Children work in pairs. The essence of Escuela Nueva is children work through dialogue and interaction, looking at their eyes, not their necks. So they're dialoguing all the time, constructing knowledge together. Individual work, collaborative and group work, uh, relevant curriculum based on children's daily life. These are isolated children in rural areas. Learning corners, what Maria Montessori said like 100 years ago, but in elite schools. You know, we had to think of unitary cost per child. $10 per child per year. A whole concept of community mapping where they know where they belong, where they have to walk the farthest away. Very simple. We had to make things simple. And as a consequence of this, we generated a new culture of peace and citizenship, allowing boys and girls to learn to learn. So you say, this, this is not new. Yeah, it's not new because these are the ideas we've known for 100 years. But remember that these came to the elite schools. Here, let me show you a little bit of, of the findings. 
in academic achievement, in social skills, and in the handling of diversity and pluralism. There have been many evaluations, UNESCO, University of London, Stanford University, where I personally had the chance to study, had the great opportunity, the World Bank, Colombian institutions, national planning. There has been a lot of research behind. This was a study that UNESCO did in the year 2000, comparing all Latin America. And Colombia was hit about the middle. This was uh, like 11, uh, in, 2000, in 2000. At that moment, Latin America, the only two countries were Cuba and Colombia, where rural children outperformed urban schools. Of course, this is not sustained afterwards. But it's interesting, because it's one of the first studies where you show how uh, education can compensate social economic limitations. It is possible. So cooperative learning initiates changes in democratic behavior. That, the past studies were in language and math. But we know that the skills, values, and attitudes of empathy, which is so crucial for the future of humanity, and peaceful social interaction can be nurtured in school. <coughs> These were studies we did in Guatemala with indigenous children. Children learn to take turns, to lead processes, to give feedback, positive feedback versus negative feedback. They take turns, they lead processes. So we start seeing this as a, a, an area for building democracy. So the way we learn influences the developments of our social interaction. There's an intimate relationship between pedagogy and the building of citizenship skills. So Escuela Nueva students gain awareness and understanding and the power of situations and groups to influence. They develop skills to step up and act as mindful change agents. They learn and practice the ability to overcome challenging situations, social, emotional, and academic. This is a study we did in Colombia with Universidad del Rosario, but then we had to publish this in the University of London so that our own researchers in Colombia could believe us. Unfortunately, that's the way it is. Girls' participation is enhanced because cooperative learning, which is essential to Escuela Nueva, contributes to eliminate prejudice, stereotypes, and gender biases. So there have been all these studies. So the World Bank selected Escuela Nueva as one of the three most outstanding reforms in developing countries that had impacted national policies. So the World Bank has brought many, many countries to Colombia to be inspired. United Nations report, Human Development Report, it was selected as one of the three. And of course, the most important for us is it compensates for socioeconomic limitations. When you compare children of Escuela Nueva, which are the poorest to the poor, with children of higher level strata. So this is reducing inequality. Girls, I mean, some significant conclusions, University of London, Washington, DC, CAMFIT. So Escuela Nueva has inspired many educational reforms. There have been many countries that have come to Colombia. We've taken this to Vietnam. Uh, to Zambia, this is Latin America, but mainly through government. So here are another lessons learned. You have to work with governments because this is their responsibility, but you need public-private partnerships in place and the role of civil society for quality and sustainability. In Colombia, we've been spreading in many of the regions. So, this became a national policy, reaching many, many children in Colombia. It has been taken through other countries, through governments. But then what happened in Colombia, like has happened in the rest of, of the rest of Latin America, the countries become decentralized. So then when we had something so wonderful that had results, it started declining and falling down. Because now we had to convince a thousand local mayors. We had to, I'm not saying decentralization is bad. But in a moment, it sort of brings down everything we had at the national level. So it started falling, and this is why when I stepped out of the ministry, I said, we cannot let this fade away. This is so important for Colombia and for other countries, especially in the developing world. So this is why we had to create an NGO. So it was coming from the other way. We started in government, and then I had, we had to create an NGO to sustain. And then we had to build public-private partnerships, especially with the Coffee Growers Federation. And so we have learned, these are some of the lessons learned. So when we started putting Escuela Nueva back in the picture. First, processes of 
impacting educational reform have to be gradual and well monitored. You have to have bottom-up approaches to demonstrate results. We had to take the school as a unit of change. Change didn't take place in the ministry, it took place at the bottom level. I think one of the most important things of maintaining Escuela Nueva is one of the longest innovations that has been sustained despite political changes is because we've always had evaluation and monitoring and empirical results. And the most important of all, the actors of change were the children, the teachers, and the community themselves. Even if it became weak in the government part, the actors of change were at the bottom. And now we're creating a community. Here's where we're gonna be needing help from uh, Brian and experts in technology, because now we created our platform for creating a community of teachers so that they would maintain this alive. Lessons learned, civil society is crucial, public-private partnerships. The constant international demand, the systemic approach, and for us it's important. We've been a team that have, has worked together for more than 30 years, convinced, and this is the way we continue to pushing it forward. So this is our work, and uh, now in Fundación Escuela Nueva, we had to create it in 1987. Uh, we started adapting it to new context, to urban areas, and to, we started leading the implementation internationally and because we wanted to improve the quality, efficiency, and sustainability of education. And um, uh, fortunately, we were selected as one of the three, uh, as one of the top 100 NGOs of the world, because we have a proven educational solution, and we want to ensure that we continue pushing it forward. So we started it adapting to urban areas with great results, we adapted it to displaced children in Colombia, especially children that have suffered the scars of war. This is a potential uh, model for refugee children, by the way, in Europe. Escuela Nueva Learning Circles. We have continued our research on cooperative learning, which is crucial, on peace education. We have demonstrated the impact on peaceful democratic behavior of children. And now we have also gone to work with the ancestral indigenous knowledge entrepreneurship and financial education. And what is interesting is what we started so many years ago now is called 21st century skills. So, of course, we have our online campus and community of practice. These are just some of the pictures of the outskirts of Bogota with the children in the most remote areas. Uh, and these children, in less than one year, were beyond the national mean, and we improved their self-esteem. So when you improve the self-esteem of a child, you know that human development is taking place. We started working much more on the concept of cooperative learning. I had a wonderful teacher in Stanford, Elizabeth Coyne. And you know, this is something that I miss in Latin America. Everybody talks about personalized education, but not cooperative learning. And this is why we have impact on peaceful behavior and coming out of Colombia is especially important. We have demonstrated results on peaceful social interaction. It isn't taught, it's learned together through participatory learning. So we have incorporated this into other dimensions in non-formal settings. Escuela Nueva has been a model, it's been a national policy, a national program, but it's also a methodology. So we've taken this participatory methodology to other contexts. For example, in El Salvador, teaching women on how to handle their financials. We use the Escuela Nueva methodology. So it's interesting to see how there's a potential of just changing the way of learning to more participatory learning, how this has impact on 20, 21st century skills. Learning to learn, learning to lead processes, learning to take initiatives, but especially learning how to work in teams. And this is the essence of Escuela Nueva. And this is what now the private sector is looking for. Thank you so very much. <laughs> this, this is just what I wanted to say. The most important thing is developing the 21st century skills, and this is what Escuela Nueva has been doing. Here they are, learning to learn, to criticize, to accept criticism, to follow instructions, to meet deadlines, especially in Latin America. Critical thinking, learning to lead process, take initiatives, take risks, communicate ideas using ICTs, learning how to synthesize information, test knowledge, but the ability to work in teams. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.